Hi friends, welcome back. So headline, markets tear up popular trades uh, that reached quote, stupid levels. <laughs> Assumptions on Fed rate cuts, AI and earnings have been uh, upending. So hey everyone, welcome back. And I wanna go through updates in the market. Uh, what is Buffett selling? What is Musk trying to sell? And uh, essentially what is all going on with our economy? Um, one of the things I, I think is interesting if you've been following this stuff, uh, we've been actually having a sell-off in tech. So Google is down today, Microsoft, NVIDIA, uh, Amazon. Tesla was actually up, but they were down big yesterday. There was like 12% like that. You know, Lily, which was running a bunch uh, this past year has been down. Um, and then uh, the talk has been, okay, are we all rotating to something else? Are we doing the Trump trade? Um, it's not necessarily certain uh, who's gonna win the election. We just had uh, some polls come out. Harris was up by a couple, but that was within the margin of error. So at the moment, I think it's gonna be tight. And then um, I heard they're gonna have some sort of debate maybe on Fox in uh, September. That's the talk right now. Um, going into looking at treasuries, you can see here, uh, the two year 4.44, the 10 year at 4.25. And um, this is the, the gist of it, guys. You think, okay, um, do I wanna take a risk and throw my money into, you know, I, I consider risky NVIDIA, which is kind of a hype play. Um, I know the kids are saying, no, Chris, you're wrong. People are gonna buy AI chips forever. It doesn't matter the price. 40,000 chip, 50,000 chip, 100,000 chip, we're all buying it. <laughs> I say, maybe not so fast. Um, and the market is sort of uh, agreeing with me at the moment, but uh, we'll see. I know that markets are up and down and I do know that the kids wanna hear that um, all their chips and their doggy coins are gonna go to the moon. Um, but guys, I want to um, show you guys everything, everything I look at every day. Um, the US dollar uh, continues to be strong. So that part's interesting because um, you know when you're thinking about, okay, is the Fed cutting or not, um, at least the dollar remains strong because it's also in relation to what our other currency is doing. Um, this affects trade. So if the dollar is strong, uh, it's easier for Americans to buy stuff in other countries. Um, however, <laughs> other countries can't buy American stuff so much. Um, and then also too, um, we've been tracking say crypto, bricks, this kind of stuff. Um, always fun things to talk about in the market. Um, what's going on with rotation? Uh, so there has been talk, having people going out with the big stuff into the little stuff. Um, if you look at the past month, actually, the NASDAQ is down um, a 0.23, or the NASDAQ 100, I should say, be more specifically, but micro caps are up 11.29, and then uh, small caps are up 7.51, so you've been seeing that. Um, if you don't wanna mess with any of this kind of stuff, just stick with an S&P 500 uh, index, and that essentially tracks everything in the market, so it'll, it'll, you know, it'll balance itself out, essentially is what I'm saying. Um, but uh, I do like to track this stuff because I know some people wanna be a little bit more active, and also too, it's good to understand what's going on with the economy, et cetera. Um, so for example, in the past month, real estate has been the winner. Uh, tech has been the loser. You guys can actually see it in the numbers. And the other thing I was wondering, interesting, as I mentioned before, what is Warren Buffett selling? In fact, he's selling more Bank of America. Um, we talked about this before, but he's been doing it for six days straight now. Uh, it's actually quite a bit. So uh, how much is he selling? So here it says 2.3 billion. Um, it, it was kind of funky because the way they wrote it, because um, here they said, okay, 802 million, then you have another 2.3. So, you know, you could call it two to 3 billion, uh, something like that. Um, he still has uh, a whole bunch of this stuff uh, in terms of Bank of America. That is his second biggest holding, um, followed by uh, uh, Apple's his, his biggest holding. So you can see um, Warren Buffett, if you, if you want to curious what he invested in, 43% of his portfolio is Apple, 10% is Bank of America, and then you got a bunch of American Express, Coca-Cola, Chevron, and Oxy. Uh, Oxy's been a new thing to his portfolio, that's the oil. Uh, slash energy and then Chubb has been a new one. I'm not sure if these other ones also have been have newer ones. I um I do follow Buffett. I'm just looking at this list right here if the email has been newer. But um this is uh, essentially his major holdings. Uh something like a Coca-Cola. Um you know you have to ask yourself this fundamental question. Uh, do you think people are going to stop uh, drinking Coke and eating chips and all that kind of stuff anytime soon? Probably not. Um, but the Bank of America trimming is an interesting one. So uh, Bank of America uh, the last five days you can see it's been going down. I mean that's probably due to Buffett. Uh, selling and you know word gets out on the street. Um, it's not necessarily like the greatest performer uh, of all time. I mean, um, I, you know, I'm, sh I'm showing you guys this because you know people wanted to see like you know this kind of thing <laughs> all the way. But um, you know, obviously it depends when you're when you're buying said thing. But the financial crash really hurt the bank. So you can see that. So clearly, if you caught the bottom, you're you're golden. But you know, if you got it uh, back here. Um, yeah, it took a long time to get up to there, opposed to just, again, it wasn't like the, you know, uh, like this kind of thing. Um, the last five years, Bank of America has only been up 35%. You guys can see it. It does have a dividend though. Um, however, I'm pointing this stuff out because I want you to understand that, um, you know, Warren Buffett's kind of like uh, turtle wins the race, right? 
rabbit and the hare kind of thing. Is the rabbit? No, I said rabbit hair twice. <laughs> the hair and the the hair and the tortoise is better. I should say. Um, and I want to compare that to sort of what you see on on YouTube. So if you watch YouTube all day every day, they're always talking about Tesla and Arg and what is Kathy Wood doing. Um, a lot of kids out there when when they do this stuff, they end up losing, frankly, all of their money. I mean, if you're buying you know the Arg stuff back here at the peak at 2021, I mean you're you're down actually quite a lot. Um, yes, and I and I can see in the last five years they're they're only down. I say only down uh, 8.43%, and they keep promising you that it's gonna you know uh, the last thing she said is like Tesla's gonna tenfold. Um, but say just for example, in the last five years, uh, Warren Buffett's up 100%. So you know it, it's it's pretty clear to see like performance wise, you know, because they always say oh you got to have a five year perspective or ten year perspective or whatever. But I mean, I can see it right there. <laughs> now to be fair to Kathy Wood or, or Mr. Buffett, past performance does not necessarily equal future results, right? So even though, say, Buffett uh, uh, doubled your money in the last five years, doesn't mean it's going to necessarily happen again. Um, also, too, he's getting old and he's going to be passing, you know, the reins to over um, to someone else, and then Charlie Munger's no longer with them. So that'll be actually quite interesting if they can, you know, keep that sort of slow and steady wins the race stuff. Um, I will say though, with um, Buffett selling, because he was selling some Apple before, and then. He was selling, you know, now Bank of America the last six days will it continue. Um, he's probably just repositioning and, and just sort of, you know, weathering the storm. He's been uh, stockpiling a bunch of cash. And the other thing, too, that like I wanted to mention the Mr. Musk stuff is, you know, everyone has different strategies of, of like how they want to manage their risk. And this is what this whole game is about is, is managing risk, right? Do you put your money in safe stuff to take those guaranteed, you know, four and five percent returns like guaranteed? Or do you want to go more risky and, and risk possibly you know, downside of 20 or upside of 20 or downside of 100 or whatever, and, you know, if you're Kathy Wood kind of thing and maybe upside of, she, she says a thousand, right? That's why those kind of, you know, people try to tell you there's going to be massive upside so that you accept the risk. Um, th there's honestly really no such thing as like zero risk, you know, unlimited upside. And anyone who tells you that is, is crazy. Um, one thing I think we'll say though, I just want to mention is interesting. Uh, so Musk, he was taking a poll of like, hey, should I take five billion of Tesla and invest it into XAI? Uh, so I guess he's going to talk to the board about that, and I feel like this is his uh, golden parachute because maybe he sort of sees what's coming. Um, and if, if you take a look at this stuff, as it, um, we're going to, uh, I've mentioned this stuff before, but I, I don't know, it, it, it was kind of buried in the headlines. But I thought it was a big one. You know, the headline or buried. The headline at the time was um, Biden just dropped out, Kamala was in, and there's you know Musk earnings reports. But I mentioned this kind of a couple times. Let's mention it again. Uh, the headline here was secret bank ratings show u.s regulators concern of a handling risk basically um half of the banks i think it was like uh, there's 22 banks they tested and there's like half of them didn't pass uh, meaning that um if any sort of like black swan event kind of thing happens um the banks don't really have good protocols in place to uh, uh to weather said storm and then we got this report today and then again i'm putting this together with you know understanding warren buffett's trimming a bit of bank of america um, Citibank got a fine, 136 uh, million, which is you know pr pretty significant, and it was some crazy crap. Like they're just like really unorganized over there or something. It said with their loans, they were just all these errors. Uh, I'll read it. This is the key line right here. Inside City, former employees said it was well known that its commercial loans files regularly contain errors. Like they they just made messed up messed stuff up. Uh, incorrect maturity dates. Uh, so this would be incorrect collateral information and even incorrect size of loans. <laughs> like, what? What are you guys doing over there? Issues that had direct bearing on examiner's ability to evaluate the bank's soundness. So, so like, when the regulars come in to see if your bank is okay, like, their paperwork's not even in order. Are they doing it on purpose? Or are they just, like, really incompetent? Who knows? I'll let you guys be the judge of that. <laughs> but um, I don't know. There's always some crazy thing going on with, with Citibank. Uh, because if you need to bank with them, um, we had that um, other issue with... Um, uh, uh, Bank of America was oh, what was it? It was it was um, it was recently, guys. Uh, I can't remember. We talked about it, and people are like, oh, "I hate Bank of America." I, I I just don't remember. I, I know we talked about Warren Buffett selling, but there, they had another scandal thing recently as well. I can't remember what it was, but I just remember people in, the, in our comments are saying they don't like it. So <laughs> I, I've never really used Bank of America, so no no comment on that. Um, oh yeah, I know what it was. It was because I mentioned before. True story. Um, I had a, a fraudulent charge uh, on one of my bank accounts. Um, this. Uh, this past week and actually it got removed almost immediately and, and people are were, were talking about bank america and stuff like that so um again you know your miles may, may vary um i guess the gdp is up 2.8 but we get a um inflation read tomorrow and then the gdp thing and, and you know put it in context this is kind of where we're at so it's um 
uh, kind of around. It, it, it was higher than expected, but it kind of around, you know, um, what other, you know, past couple of quarters have been. Um, however, I think the big read everyone's watching for is inflation, right? So regardless of the GDP does, what's inflation doing? Um, and this is the PC, which is the Fed's um, uh, read. It'll probably come in a little bit lower than before. That's the, the predicted. Um, they want 2%. You know, maybe they're gonna get, it's going to come in at 2.5, something like that. Um, but I keep telling you guys, um, regardless of what the national numbers uh, say, uh, just think about your particular situation. Um, and, and this is the kind of stuff that I, I, I look at all of it. I just look at all of it. I'm just showing you. But this is the kind of stuff that I think gets overlooked. Um, like this is a pretty big headline, actually. Credit card delinquency rates hit a 12-year high, right? So people aren't paying their debts, essentially. Um, and that's, again, I'm talking about, well, you know, Warren Buffett's trimming his banks a little bit. <laughs> Elon Musk looking for a golden parachute. And then it says here, um, this is from the, this is coming from the uh, New York Fed. Uh, household debt swelling and credit card and auto loan delinquency rates rising across aid groups. Consumer spending has largely held up this year, uh, even as the economy cools. So people are still spending, right? So that's part of the, the, the good news, but like, how are they spending and what are they spending it with, right? Using credit cards probably here. Um, wealthier households are still splurging on experiences like travel. So the wealthy people are doing that. Uh, while big brands dangle promotions to keep tighter budget uh, customers coming back. And then the, um, the wealthier household thing is kind of interesting because we, we've been seeing there's pullbacks in uh, luxury spending, like the purses that was um, like Louis Vuitton, Gucci. We, we saw numbers on that in the last couple of days. You've been watching my channel. We talked about that. And then we also talked about with the, so say like, for example, the promotion thing, uh, many of the car companies are offering a lot of incentives to get people through the door. I, I, I think, and I feel like, and this is just from numbers that the consumers either going to <laughs> just run out of money and they can't spend anymore, or, or they're gonna like realize, hey, you know, I, I can't keep this up forever. Like, like instead of like spending your money all the time and you know going to debt all the time, it's actually pretty good to like pay stuff off and start building up you know well. So get some index funds, uh, get some CDs, um, put your money um, you know in in stuff that's safe that's like not risky. <laughs> and because um, problem is, is like if you put yourself in, for example, people who are saying, hey, you gotta buy Tesla today all day every day stock, and it goes down, and then you're like you're, you're faced with the choice, okay, crap, do I do I sell for loss and just you know, screw Mr. Musk, get out now, or do you wait for it to come back and your money's just kind of like in, in limbo in a way? And then the problem is, is that if, if you, you know, have credit card things you got to take care of or, or whatever, and the interest rates are still elevated, because, uh, you know, some people, you know, desperately, and this would be like people who are in commercial loans are desperately looking for, um, you know, ways to uh, bring those uh, sort of risks down or, or bring the leveraged uh, debt down, right? Because they, they're underwater. Um, they, they essentially, what people do is they, they, you know, go in margin or take leverage or whatever, uh, to make big bets on what they think is going to happen in the future. And sometimes that doesn't pan out. Basically they overextend themselves. It's like going out and buying a private jet, spending a bunch of money on said thing. Cause you think you're going to get all this great business deals and the deals don't materialize like that kind of stuff. So you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I make jokes, but there's real, some people do that and you'll see it on public. Like what the heck is this person doing? Anyway. Um, yeah, this also said too that people are opening up less credit cards, which I thought was kind of interesting. And then the banks, this is the headline here, banks are bracing for consumers to stop paying off their credit cards. Like even the banks are preparing for that, right? So this just came out yesterday. So um, this is stuff that I, that I want to show you because I want to understand the full economy, not just track one particular stock, right? So, but that's what most kids want. And I understand for some people, it's not that interesting to learn everything, but I, I think it is myself. <laughs> That's why I do it. I find this stuff, it's really important to, to track stuff, um, especially when it, when, it, when it affects you. So for example, um, if you're at John Deere, uh, they've been doing layoffs the last month or so. It's just been like every week they announce a new one. Um, essentially what happens is business slows, right? So sales are down 20%, net income is down 17%, right? They just, you know, look look at like, okay, we gotta cut costs somehow. And it's interesting because you'll, you'll read these kind of headlines where it says, and this is, a quote from an employee, but I'll read it to you. It says, greed, John Deere rolls out uh, hundreds of US layoffs and sends work to Mexico. And they had a quote from an employee and I want you guys to hear it. And I'm curious if it relates to uh, your neck of the woods where you're employed. So it says here, uh, we get a wind of more layoffs daily, it seems, and it's causing uncertainty all over, right? So you're working at this company and you kind of hear rumors that they're gonna lay off. You, you guys know, you, you, you kind of know things are coming down the pipeline. And then um, this person says, the only reason for Deer to do this is greed. And um, yeah, and then he goes on another work, I don't know if it's the same work or a different one, but it says here, our harvester plant is still in production and management has been quiet, 
Okay, so you got these rumors swirling around that there's going to be layoffs, and and you know they're still working for now. And this is what I thought was interesting. They're not doing the uh, normal quote time to talk meetings. I mean, your manager isn't coming saying, "Hey, you know, you're probably going to get fired soon." They're not doing that. They're keeping quiet um, at meetings as they have in the recent past. My belief is they don't want people to know they are losing their jobs until they get everything built for the year. So I, th I think that's kind of interesting because. At least according to this one person, so who knows what's really going on? But I, I just I thought this was really telling, though. This they 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 just have bad morale, and you think you're going to lose your job. And even if the man, let's say for example, the manager is doing everything and, and not going to fire you, but you just feel like I think they're going to fire me, right? Like just you know that kind of feel. And then in your mind, you're just like ah, oh, they're just going to try to get me to you know keep working on this project, and when that's done. Uh, you know, end of the year, maybe they'll, they'll, they'll can me. Usually companies um, like, like this, may, you know, that maybe they'll lay off. They use, usually don't lay off during holidays. So maybe start back up again in January, February. Um, but we'll see. Uh, also says here, let's see. It says, we know a layoff is coming. Uh, we don't know if, how many, or when it will happen. We're expecting to finish production in mid-August and believe we'll see a layoff then. Okay, so this person's saying, you know, maybe right after uh, next month, something like that. So I, I, I point out this story because I think, this kind of represents a, a, a you know a certainly a lot of people's experiences right now and that's what i i always find it odd when, when i you know see what's going on around youtube social media and stuff like that and and people are just talking oh yeah my my you know my favorite tesla car stock and i always use a tesla example because it's a popular retail stock but there's like oh it's gonna go to the moon because everyone's gonna buy electric cars and it's like i mean what are you guys talking about <laughs> and that, that's why i look at the whole economy right and look at also what people are saying look at credit card debts uh, look at interest rates, etc. Right. Um, moreover, you know what is the situation with people at work? Because you need people to have money to buy said things to keep this whole system going. Um, Uber and Lyft got a big uh, ruling in their favor, uh, so they can actually uh, treat their um, employees not as employees but as contractors. So that that is a big distinction. So again, they got a ruling in their favor. Uber and Lyft now treats their work well, workers will say as contractors, not employees. So that basically means we don't have to give them benefits. That's what it, that's what it boils down to. Because uh, if they did have to give benefits and they got to pay people more and then everything goes up. So um, for people, we do have people in the community that, that work these kind of things. I, I'd be curious your thoughts on this. Um, were you you know hoping for some benefits, et cetera? Now the negative, and because you know, everything has nuances, uh, if you were to treat Uber and Lyft people say as employees, the argument that companies would make is that um, then it wouldn't really be a gig thing per se. You couldn't just, you know, work whenever you wanted because we would want maybe a set number of hours or whatever, and then we'll offer you some sort of benefits. So um, this is the kind of stuff though. I, I think, uh, don't th I, I don't think the gig economy as of now is not going to go away any, anytime soon. I know Mr. Musk and that stuff, you know, wants to replace these gig workers all with robots, but <laughs> frankly, I, I'm not seeing it. I, I think we're still... Uh, you know, have people who need jobs and it just politically it wouldn't really fly, but that's just my opinion on that. And moreover, here's another example of like understanding the larger, you know, world economy. This was an interesting one that came out today. Younger Chinese fume uh, at call to raise retirement age. So basically they have a population imbalance there. And this is what it is now. So this is your older group, right? So this is your, your older people and this is your younger people. And you got this kind of big cohort kind of here in the middle. So between people say, uh 30s to 50s right but as you move in in time and this is the holler system works you know be it social security pensions or, or whatever you guys are not pensions take examples this you just call it social security <laughs> the idea though is that um our, our, our workers today support the workers uh, or sorry the retired people uh today right so you 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 have a system where other people paid in the system and then they're going to help um uh, they're going to be helped be supported by people who are working now i think you guys know how this stuff works so if there's not enough workers to support the ones in the future. And this is a prediction, uh, a projection in China of 2054. You can see the aging population is already um, uh, dwarfing the uh, younger group. And then you get to 2100 and you got this like massive group of older people compared to young. Uh, Cause essentially, right, the, the, this you can easily do the math. If you had a one child policy, two parents have one kid, you're shrinking in size. And that's sort of, we've seen those numbers. And it's interesting when you hear the comments about this stuff, cause we're talking about like what's gonna happen to our you know, essentially the social security slash pension. Um, here's what person says, and these are kind of, they, they highlighted young people are kind of irritated by the raise in retirement age uh, for, for retirement, um, you know, money. It says here, I suggest that the experts die early. Ouch, that's not very nice, of course, but I understand the, the anger there. Um, there's another one. Uh, some people get a very nice pension 
and this is in China, and then there are 70% of people who get a pretty low pension. So the inequality there is quite large. So, you know, only 30% then get a decent one, it says here. Uh, but uh, but even the 30% is already not going to be sustainable, right? The ones who get a nice pension, so even that may go away. Here's another person um, was saying, uh, even if they reach that day, will there still be a pension? <laughs> People are asked, talking about this in China, same as the USA. Uh, it's very challenging for the post 90 generation and those who follow. And then this is probably the, the biggest uh, or most interesting quote that I read. This is coming from a young person. It says, one online commentator said of the younger generation, uh, born when they said they were too many people, uh, grew up when they said they were too few, and now too old uh, when job hunting, and now too young <laughs> to retire. So um, I, I laugh, but you know this is sort of the frustration that people feel. Uh, it's just like the system is working against you, be it your demographics, be it your you know economic system, etc. And then this goes back to something I just talk about with you guys all the time. Um, you know, worry about your own particular uh, situation. Make sure you secure your job. Uh, save money, keep money aside. Spend less than you uh, bring in, right? Um, and and you know, don't worry about every, all your other friends buying Lambos because, as you guys can see here, I mean, we have tons of Americans out there that essentially, um, we'll, we'll put it this way, uh, write checks that their bodies can't cash. So, <laughs> or or buy buy private jets that you have to scam to keep a flying. So. <laughs> I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, please be careful out there, everyone. And um, you know, with with, with all things, um, in my, my opinion, I don't think it's crazy to to take the Warren Buffett method and just think, hey, you know, uh, tortoise wins the race. Um, I know that the kids all want to be the hare, um, but essentially, you you play a risky game with that kind of stuff. So, um, do be safe, and uh, I'll catch y'all in the next video.